Aloha and welcome to Money Talks. My name is Rayanne Ishavez and I am filling in for Shonda Park. So I will be your host today. Uh, welcome everyone and happy new year. So I am very excited. Yes, it is a new year and usually the new year means new beginnings. And so, you know, usually at this time of year, people set goals, they set their New Year's resolutions, right? So people are very inspired to really make some changes in their lives. And so I thought to kick off today's show, you know, um, we want to talk about um, what people tend to, what the most common things that people set during their uh, New Year's resolution, right? So when we think about what people um, want to accomplish throughout the year, the two main things that people want to make changes in are number one, their health, and of course, their wealth, right? So I'm really excited to have this discussion with um, our guest today. You know, I couldn't think of a more qualified person to talk about finance today and really helping people to um, find solutions that they may not even have thought about. And so you know, this person, I've known him um, for a really long time. You know, I, he's someone that I respect personally and professionally. He is also a financial educator like myself. Um, and he's been in the industry for almost two decades. So he is a wealth of knowledge. And I know today uh, with what we will discuss, he will bring a lot of value to our viewers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome uh, Ben to our show. Welcome, Ben, and uh, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing today? Great. So what about yourself? So uh, for me, I've been, like you said, almost two decades in the financial industry, 17 years to be exact, and um, just something that I you know, enjoy and love doing. We've been able, uh, over the last 17 years, educated thousands of families in our team and we've been able to span not only out of Honolulu, which is our home base here, but we've been able to expand in roughly about 10 plus states now. So I see a huge need for what we do. Just very, very excited to begin this new year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for this new year as well. And so let's get right into it, Ben. You know, we um, talked about how we want to talk about how people set financial goals right in the beginning of the year but you've been you know in this industry for um almost 20 years right so that's a long time and I've, i'm sure you've sat down with many families um but what do you see is the most common financial goal that people set when you sit down with them and discuss um, their finances yeah, so uh, financial goals are something that people think about throughout the year, not just during the New Year's, but during the New Year's, definitely it's a time where people do revisit their goals, right? And they have a refresh attitude about accomplishing them. Uh, over the last 17 years, I see that the most common goals, number one, is to get out of debt, right? You know, almost every person that I talk to, every family I talk to, uh, in America, having debt is such a, a big part of our lives. So getting out of debt is a very common goal, as well as uh, being able to save money for their kids' college education. Uh, buying a home. Buying a home is another very, very common goal. And a lot of people also want to be able to financially be able to travel. So these are, I would probably say, the four most common goals. And, you know, if you look at all four of these goals, uh, it includes, you know, saving and investing money, right? You know, you want to be able to get to that point where you're able to, you know, whether it's buy a home, get out of debt, um, travel, as well as help your kids with their college education. So these are the four most common goals that we see over and over again throughout the year, but especially during the New Year's time. So, yeah, Ben, I would have to agree with you, you know, sitting down with many families over the last 10 years, those are the most common goals that I do see uh, people share with me and I think Google will also agree with us too so if you just looked up you know in, um, this year what people set as their financial goals that you would see the same things um, but you know right now with the high cost of living especially in Hawaii uh, we see high inflation everywhere and with people not um, with their salaries or their income not you know, increasing at the same rate as cost of like living and inflation, you know, what can people do? Because I feel like, um, you know, 
that's why every single year when you look at the the goals that people set, it's you know very similar to the goals that they set um, every year. However, why is it that we are not reaching these goals, and why is it that even more importantly today we have to really pay attention because. Um, first, would you agree with me, Ben, that when people start looking at their finances, they look at the income that they make, they look at their expenses, and they kind of look at, okay, where can I cut down, right? But with in today's environment, it's very difficult to do that because, again, cost of living, high inflation. So can you talk about what are the most common people the common things people do as far as solutions and maybe some alternatives that they have not even considered yet? Absolutely. And like you said, a lot of people, they have the best intentions around the New Year's time. They want to accomplish all of these goals that they set out. But most people, this is what we're taught. We're taught that if we need to make more money, then, you know, the solution is either get a part time job or you try to maybe get a raise at the job that you're in. Or maybe you make a lateral move, right? You know, you don't work for this company. You decide that you're going to work for another company. And this other company hopefully offers you a bigger salary. But my personal opinion, those uh, solutions may not actually help you accomplish what you need to. And the reason why I believe that is because whenever you make a fixed income, uh, you know, your dreams and your goals will also be fixed. So if you, you know, a lot of people, what they think is, okay, my dreams and my goals are yay high, right? You know, I want to be able to, you know, live in a beautiful home. I want my kids to go to college. I want to be debt free. But when they look at their income, it doesn't match their dreams, right? So a lot of people, they they go, okay, well, I need to make more money. So they, you know, get another job. They try to, you know, get raises. But that still brings us, you know, maybe slightly closer than our dreams and our goals. And so a lot of people end up reducing their dreams and their goals to the, you know, or their uh, dreams and their goals to the size of their income. So in my belief, you need to have an income source that is not fixed. And, you know, the most common way to do it is to be an entrepreneur, meaning to be a business owner. And so when you're a business owner, then your income is not going to be fixed, Right. You know, you're going to be able to, as long as you're able to service the market and take care of, you know, people's uh, issues and, and, you know, you can find a solution for them, then your market could be limitless. Okay. So that's what I believe. And I, I just wanted to share how I started that line of thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah, just like, yeah. Just like a lot of people, I, I you know, my, my parents told me, okay, go to school, get good grades. Right. And then. Uh, when you graduate, get a good job that's steady and and pays well. And so, you know, that's the route I took. I actually became a computer engineer, right? And uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of families and a lot of parents do that. So being an engineer, I thought, okay, wow, you know, this is a a a career that a lot of people work hard for. And at that time, I did not make a six figure income yet. But my dream was, okay, I need to make a six-figure income. If I make a six-figure income, then I feel like I'm living the American dream. So, but the problem was our expenses tend to catch up too, right? The more we make, the more we tend to spend, right? I had no knowledge of money. I had no knowledge of being an entrepreneur. So one day what happened was uh, a friend of mine that was my coworker, um, he actually eats lunch with me every day. And this one particular day when we went out to lunch, he told me, Ben, I, I'm quitting my job. And I looked at my friend who is my coworker. I said, you know, why would you do that? Did you find another job that pays better? At this time, it was around 9-11. So uh, jobs were scarce where people were getting laid off. And, you know, he told me, no, I'm not you know, looking for another job. I'm actually going to become my own business owner. And I said, you know, a business owner, you know, why would you want to do that? And he said something I still remember today. He said, if you truly want to be financially free, you can't work at a job because if you do, your boss will always dictate how much you make, um, you know, what kind of dreams you're allowed to have. And if you want to build something that has no limits, you got to work for yourself and become an entrepreneur. So that started my thinking of, oh, I want to be my own business owner. I just didn't know where. 
But, you know, one day a friend of mine introduced me to the financial industry and, you know, slowly but surely I transitioned from being part time in the financial industry, full time as an engineer to, you know, giving up my engineering job full time and becoming full time in this industry and helping a lot of families. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad that you shared that, Ben, because, you know, as you were sharing, you know, most people don't think about, you know, because we're talking about financial goals, right, and and solutions to how they can accomplish these financial goals. And um, yes, immediately, it's either we cut down our expenses or increase our income, but there's only so much that we can increase our income um, at, you know, at our jobs, right? And um, and one way is to start a business. But I think for most people, they don't see themselves as um, business owners, right? Because most of us, like you said, we go to school, get a job and we start working. And we and so we don't necessarily see ourselves as entrepreneurs or business owners. But I'm so glad that you shared that, you know, you actually started off as an engineer and then transition to being a, a successful business owner today. And that's very similar to my story as you know, you are my mentor. And uh, most people don't know that I actually studied to become a dental hygienist. And, you know, right away, I actually saw the career glass ceiling right, um, in, in my career. And so I knew that if I wanted to accomplish my financial goals faster, I had to find another source of income. And to the second point that I was going to make was that you know, some people think, well, it's either or, like, I'm going to be an employee or a business owner, where in fact, you can actually be both, right? So can you expand a little bit more on maybe the benefits of being an entrepreneur, you know, different sources of income that you can create um, being a business owner? Um, wow. What? A, yeah, definitely awesome question. Um there are so many facets that I can touch upon uh, when it comes to why being an entrepreneur is so powerful. Uh, earlier, I talked about limitless income. So what an entrepreneur really is, is they look for a problem and then they find a solution for it. And the bigger the problem or the more people that have this problem, then the greater the market for what you do, right? So that's why your income is limitless versus if you get another job or get a part-time job or something like that, your income will be limited. Okay, so that's one benefit of being an entrepreneur. Uh, the second benefit of being an entrepreneur is obviously the tax advantages, right? There's a lot of tax advantages, you know, with being an entrepreneur versus being a uh, employee. See, as an employee with a W-2, you have two major deductions, right? Your house, if you own a house, and your kids. But as an entrepreneur, almost every business expense could be a deduction for you, right? So you look at my business, uh, when we, you know, take business trips, you know, our licensing, uh, when we spend money on the office, right? When we hire uh, staff, all of these things are now considered business deductions in our business, right? So we get a lot of tax breaks as an entrepreneur. Um, but I would say in my personal opinion, if you, play the long-term game, which I like to play, um, is that being an entrepreneur allows you to create something we call passive income. Now, most people in the world will make something we call active income, right? Income that, you know, they make when, you know, they go to work at their job. They're trading their time for money. That's what's known as active income. But a true entrepreneur you know, eventually earns passive income, which is income that comes in even though we're not actively working. See, every human being in life, we have 24 hours a day, just like, you know, everybody else. Um, but, you know, we can't work all 24 hours. We have to sleep. We have to eat. We have to spend time with our family, all of these things. And if we get injured, if we get sick, if we go on vacation, our income stops if we make a fixed income that's active. But as an entrepreneur, you can start to leverage passive income, right? Build sources that can create an income stream for you. And that's how you become financially independent. You'll, you'll rarely find people that make active income financially independent. But, you know, most of the time when you look at financially independent people, they are people that are entrepreneurs that create passive income. So I think that's why being an, an entrepreneur gives you so much more freedom uh, as you know, you would being a uh, employee. 
right? So, um, you know, freedom of time is another big, big example. Um, I'll, I'll share one quick example, um, you know, and then I'll hand it back off to you, Rayanne. But I remember one time uh, when I was uh, working in, in the business and uh, my wife told me, hey, Ben, um, we have uh, our, our son has a basketball game and it's going to be Monday at two o'clock in the afternoon. And I said, sure, no problem. Right. So I scheduled it in. I went to the gym. And what really struck me that day, Rayanne, was that uh, the, almost the entire gym was empty. And I thought to myself, where are all the other parents? Well, of course, they're, they're working, right? They're, they're at their job. They have to work at their job to make a living. But being an entrepreneur, I, get, I got to control my own hours and I set my own time. And that's one of the freedoms you have as an entrepreneur. I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you still need to work hard, uh, but, you know, the rewards can be much greater. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you then. And, uh, you know, I was able to transition away from my uh, dental hygiene career to now uh, being in business, right, in the financial industry. And one of the benefits, really, of being in the financial industry as well is, you know, learning the financial concepts. So I forgot to mention to you earlier, I know um, you said when people make more money, they tend to spend more money, right? You you said that earlier in this show, and there's actually... Um, a term for that or a, a, if I think it's it's called um, Parkinson's law right so the more money you make your expenses tend to you know um, catch up with the, the income that you make and so I think that's why we see again going back to why people set financial goals and why maybe we need to also break that cycle and start to really change our approach and how we um, you know uh, how we approach our finances. And so I know, you know, being a financial educator is really important. Um, and another reason why I think that in addition to not just, um, you know, working on these financial goals that we set, but I think sometimes we have to first, um, ha I think it's number one, it starts with awareness. Right, Ben, like if you if you're setting financial goals, that means you have some kind of awareness where, you know, you want to be somewhere better financially. Right. So that's a very good place to be. Would you agree with me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you know, first of all, you have to be a, you have to know what you want. The issue with a lot of people today is that we simply don't know what we really want. If you ask people, what is it that you want out of your life? And again, the goals that I mentioned earlier, right, you know, buy a house, um, be able to um, pay off their debt and, and things like that. Those are wonderful goals. But for a lot of people, it's more like a wish list item. It's not a actual definite goal. And one of the key factors that, you, you know, you'll know if someone is very serious about their goal or is not is do they have a timeline? You know, do they... Uh, have something very specific in terms of when they're going to accomplish this, right? Because when, when I ask people, okay, you want to buy a new home, when do you want to buy it by? Or where do you want to live? You know, what kind of home are you going to uh, have? And most people's answer to those questions is, I don't know, right? So when you don't even know what you want, how can you get what you want? So one of the things is when you are setting your goals, be absolutely clear on what it is that you want. The you know, more specific and more clear the picture is in your mind, the more chances you are or the, the higher the probability of you accomplishing that goal. So awareness is absolutely critical. Yeah, I think that's a great advice, Ben. And, you know, um, do you have any um, words of encouragement for people to kind of guide them in you know, maybe what they should do next, right? So um, I think the, the that very first thing that you said, number one, um, be very clear with your goals, right? But what can you give them some tangible steps that they can take um, so that they can start off this new year great with their finances? Absolutely. Uh, I want to just encourage all of you that have, you know, these goals and these dreams that you've been holding in, you know, for a long time, right? You know, you might be thinking about them uh, for a while now and you ever, you think, you know, can I ever accomplish this? Earlier, you mentioned that a lot of people 
you know, being an entrepreneur may never have crossed their mind, or maybe they never thought they could do it. Uh, nowadays, with all of the opportunities that are available to us, whether it's online or whether we see a lot of, you know, uh, things that we can improve on and do better, it is, you know, in this time and age, it is easier to be an entrepreneur than it ever was in the history of the world. Um, I, I believe that we have all the tools that we need. If you look at a lot of people today that are the younger generation, the millennials and the Gen Zs, you know, many of them are entrepreneurs through a tool called social media, right? Yeah. So there are so many different ways that we can become an entrepreneur now. Being an entrepreneur is no longer, I need to have, you know, uh, several hundred thousand or million dollars in capital. I got to take all of this risk in order to become an entrepreneur. Nowadays, being an entrepreneur is, you know, uh, as risk-free as possible, right? And it doesn't take a whole lot of your time. So many times people can do it as a part-time thing. You know, one terminology that's been gaining a lot of momentum in recent years is a side hustle, right? A side hustle does not mean get another job. A side hustle, if you really think about it, means you do something that you have passion in and that is your own thing, right? You know, your own business. So I think nowadays, uh, everybody can become an entrepreneur. Um, you just got to take action. And some of the things that I can encourage people to do is look for someone, you know, in your, uh, you know, in your network that is a successful entrepreneur or is doing something part time. Maybe ask them a few questions and, and see how you can branch off and doing your thing. Maybe you can partner with someone. Maybe somebody else has a similar idea as you or, or a skill set that you can work together in. So why don't you work together and create a solution for somebody, right? It could be as easy as, you know, maybe you and a friend uh, get together and then you create a landscaping business and then you go from house to house and, you you know, you help people during the weeknights or the weekends, right? But when you start to become an entrepreneur, your whole world changes because your view of how, you know, money works, right? We talk about finances. We Your whole view about how to generate money changes, right? Because it, for me, it was such a paradigm shift when I started to really understand active income versus passive income. So, uh, you know, don't give up. You know, being an entrepreneur is not going to be an easy journey and it's not supposed to be, right? If it were easy, everybody would become an entrepreneur. But there are going to be definitely tough times and challenges that arise in your journey as an entrepreneur. But these are normal uh, things that an entrepreneur has to go through. Right. When you go through these challenges, you know, it actually makes you a more effective and a better entrepreneur. You're able to better solve people's problems. You're able to better help people. Right. So I think that, you know, it, uh, today, again, I think there's so many opportunities you know, to be an entrepreneur. I'm in the financial industry and so are you. Uh, you know, this is industry that we're always constantly looking for good people. There, this is an industry. That is a very high paying industry and very underserved, meaning that there's so much market for what we do, but we don't have enough people to help more people. So if you go, well, I mean, like, you know, can someone like me be part of the financial industry? Absolutely, because that's how I started. When I first started I'm, as an engineer, I had no financial education or knowledge, no experience in business at all. But you know, our program, Rayanne, you know, trains people just like me, just like you to be able to be successful in the financial industry. Right. So, you know, if you are interested in learning more about what we do, how you can create an income part time that could eventually you know, bring you the freedom that you desire. I know Rayanne has some contact information you know, to help you wrap up this call. Thank you so much for that, Ben. Yeah, you're right. There are so many benefits. You know, you mentioned some tangible benefits and intangible benefits to being an entrepreneur. And, you know, I just want to leave the last few minutes for our viewers who maybe who are not quite ready to join a business or, you know, become an entrepreneur. Can you share with them some resources at um, the financial center that they can tap into to really help them with their financial goals? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, in our financial center in Honolulu, uh, we do financial workshops uh, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. 
and every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So these workshops are really good because they're designed to be uh, very easy to understand. We teach topics like how to pay off debt, how to be able to invest, uh, what are you know the ways that you can properly protect your family. So a lot of these topics that we teach in our financial workshops uh, are very, very powerful topics if we start applying them. And our workshops are, you know, a free, uh, you know, classes. It's open door policy. Um, anytime, you know, somebody wants to come and take a workshop, they're more than welcome to. So if you're interested in, you know, taking financial workshops, uh, you know, Rayanne has some contact information for you in just a moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we love those workshops. I think they are a, a great start to, you know, and it really doesn't matter where you are financially, whether you have some experience or no experience at all. I think the workshop can really benefit anybody and everybody. In fact, we have all walks of life that come in and attend the workshop um, from uh, you know, high school students, uh, because I do believe that the earlier we start financial education, the better. So we have, um, you know, people of different ages, people who have already retired, who are looking into maybe their next phase of uh, in their retirement season and where they have a lot of questions about Medicare, long-term care. There's so much that you can learn from the financial workshops. So we do want to invite every single one of you to come and join us. Um, you'll see my contact information on the screen very shortly. So give us a call. And um, until we see you next time, I just want to thank you so much for um, joining us on this show this afternoon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.